Byzantine Empire has been a regional superpower and a buffer zone between the Christian and Islamic world for centuries. After the loss of Constantinople to the Ottoman Turks in 1453, Byzantine Empire has collapsed and another force has risen to power in Asia Minor. Ottoman Empire has yet to become one of the greatest empires the world has ever seen. The Ottoman war machine crushed everything in front of them, and no army at a time could match their power. Ottomans soon subordinated southeastern Europe, western Asia and northern Africa. This, however, wasn't enough. The Ottomans had long aspired to conquer Europe and capturing the city of Vienna would give them control over the Nubian southern Europe and the overland trade routes. Guys, just a quick reminder, if you enjoy what I do, if you enjoy my content, you can also support me on the Patreon and uh, help me out financially a little bit. I'd be really grateful for that and thank you. The Ottoman army was mobilized on 21st January in 1682 and the war was declared on 6th August that same year. That would mean a risky or rather impossible invasion since a three-month campaign would have taken the Ottomans far in the winter. The Ottomans have decided this would present too much of a risk and postponed the campaign for the next year. This gave 15 months for Vienna to prepare its defense and for Leopold to assemble troops from the Holy Roman Empire and form an alliance. The decisive alliance of the Holy Roman Empire with Poland was concluded with Treaty of Warsaw in 1683. Leopold promised support to Sobieski if Ottomans attacked Krakow and Sobieski in return that he would send Polish army in case Vienna would be attacked. This alliance may have been the reason why Battle of Vienna has been won. The Ottoman troops had reached Belgrade by May. They were joined by a Transylvanian army and a force of Principality of Upper Hungary. They laid siege to Gyor and the remaining army of 1500,000 soldiers had started to march towards the city of Vienna. In the 7th of July, around 40,000 Crimean Tatar troops have arrived to proximity of the city of Vienna. They had twice as many soldiers as the Imperial troops in the area. Emperor Leopold, along with his court and army of 60,000 Austrian soldiers, fled Vienna for Passau. Charles IV, Duke of Lorraine, withdrew his force of 20,000 and fled toward Linz. By the time main Ottoman army have arrived at Vienna on 14 July, the city's only defense was now 15,000 men that were commanded by a Count Ernst Rudinger von Stachenburg. During the summer of 1683, however, the King of Poland, Jan III Sobieski, had prepared an expedition to Vienna, honoring his obligations to the treaty. He left his own nation virtually undefended when deporting from Krakow on 15 August. Imre Tokoli, the leader of Upper Hungary, has seen an opportunity, but failed in his attempt to advance to Poland. Jan Kazimir Sapeha the Younger devastated the Hungarian highlands with his Lithuanian army and arrived in Vienna after his victory. The main Ottoman army finally laid siege to Vienna on 14 July. The city at the time, as of mentioned, was guarded only by 15,000 men who refused to give up Vienna, although 1,500,000 Turks were standing in front of their gates. Imagine the courage these men had. Although the Ottomans had to spend over three weeks to remove old palisades around the city, dig tunnels and so forth, the Ottoman siege cut virtually every means of food supply into the city of Vienna. This have caused the despair and low morale among the men. Fatigue became so common that von Strachenburg ordered any soldier found asleep on watch to be shot on sight. The forces holding Vienna were on their last legs where imperial forces under Charles IV Duke of Lorraine defeated the Koli at Pisamber and joined with them. On 6 September, the Poles under Sobieski crossed the Danube to unite with Imperial troops and additional forces from Saxony, Bavaria, Baden, etc. Sobieski's courage and remarkable achievements had led the leadership of forces of European allies to be entrusted to him. The Polish king, who now had under his command 70 to 80 thousand soldiers. The battle started before all units were fully deployed. At 4 o'clock in the morning on 12 September 1683, the Ottomans finally launched an attack. The Germans were the first to strike back. Charles of Lorraine moved forward with the Imperial Army and took several key positions. By noon, Imperial Army had already severely mauled the Ottomans and came close to a breakthrough. The Ottomans, however, still had a Janissary and Sipahi troops in the back waiting for the assault on the city. The Ottoman commanders had intended to take Vienna before Sobieski arrived, but time ran out. 
In the early afternoon a large battle started on the other side of the battlefield as the Polish infantry advanced on the Ottomans. Instead of concentrating on the battle with the relief army, the Ottomans continued their efforts to force their way into the city. The Poles made a good progress and by 4 pm they had taken the village of Gershov. Village of Gershov served as a base for the massive cavalry charge later on. The Ottomans were locked between Polish and Imperial forces. Both Charles of Lorraine and Jan III Sobieski decided to continue the offensive and finish off the enemy. The Imperial forces resumed the offensive and although they encountered fierce resistance, they had made further gains and taken the village of Unterdubling and Oberdubling. They were now very close to the central Ottoman position, the Turkin Shells. As they were preparing to storm it, they could see the Polish cavalry in the action. It is recorded that the Polish cavalry slowly emerged from the forest and entered into the action, battering the Ottoman lines and approaching the Turkin Shans, which was now threatened from three sides. The Poles from the west, the Saxons and the Bavarians from the northwest and the Austrians from the north. At that point the Ottoman vizier decided to leave this position and retreat. The Allies were now ready to finish off the Ottomans. The Polish king ordered the largest cavalry charge in history. 18,000 horsemen charged down the hills. Exhausted and already low on moral, Ottomans soon started to flee the battlefield. Sobieski led the charge. The cavalry charge was the final deadly blow. Less than three hours after the cavalry attack, the united European Christian forces had won the battle and saved Vienna. After the victory, Sobieski paraphrased Julius Caesar's famous quotation, Veni vidi vici. I came, I saw, God conquered. This battle has been described as an enormous defeat and failure for the Ottoman Empire, the most disastrous since the foundation of the Ottoman Empire. Ottomans have lost approximately 20,000 men, of these 15,000 in the last cavalry charge. Never again did the Ottomans fully recover and in later periods started to lose more and more of their territory. Have not Europeans won that battle, we might have spoke Turkish today. Now, Battle of Vienna carries a rather symbolic meaning for me. Not only Europeans have defeated a much stronger opponent and stopped the Islam spreading over Europe, but European men have stood together, fought and died along one another to preserve what was and still is sacred to us, our home, Europe. They have fought no matter their ethnic background, whether they were Slavic, Germanic, Italic, they have took their arms and showed their courage. Victory Vienna should stand as a reminder that Europeans truly have courage in their blood and should never be afraid no matter what opponent we might face. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and learned a thing or two. If you did, make sure you click that like button and if you haven't yet, subscribe. If you like what I do, you can also support me on the Patreon. Thank you for watching.